Hello and welcome to our tutorial video about the MIPI CFI N5991 frame generator. The MIPI CFI N5991 frame generator is used to generate CFI signals, which can be used to test the DOT's compatibility to this standard. The MIPI CFI N5991 frame generator supports the M8195A AWG system and allows single and multi lane testing. In the main screen, we see the connection setup panel and at the bottom of the screen, we see the log file. At the connection setup panel, we have the system information, which is going to be tested along with the connection diagram displayed for the current configuration. At the log file, we see the progress during the signal generation. We can also see if any errors occurred during the process. Let's go through the connection setup panel parameters step by step. First, we have the Calibrated Values option. If this option is selected, that means Calibrated Values will be used. The Calibrated Values derived from running the calibration procedures using ValleyFrame N5991 MIPI CFI test automation software. This will be covered in a separate video. Next checkmark is the Offline mode. Offline option needs to be selected when MIPI C5 frame generator needs to be run without connecting to real instruments. AWG setup is a subgroup of parameters. We can select either 4 channel mode or dual channel mode, which are visible by clicking on the drop down list. If we select 4 channel mode, it allows to connect 4 channels of the AWG module. It supports up to 4.5 gigabits per second data rate and you may test up to 3 lanes. When we select dual channel mode, it allows to use two channels of the AWG module and it supports the HS data rates up to 9 gigabits per second. And we can select two data lines maximum. Next, we see the ALP mode, that means alternative low power mode. If we're going to check this option, we need to use special frame sequences which are defined according to the MIPI C5 specification. When we select more number of lanes, the connection diagram is also updated accordingly. In this current video tutorial, we are going to use the simple configuration by selecting 4-channel mode and single lane. Here, we can provide the host IP address and the module HiSlib address. Once we have selected all the parameters for the test, we click on the Connect button. Before we press connect button, we see that the signal option is disabled. Once we press the button, the system and software will get connected. The signal button is now activated and we also see at the log file that the connection is successful. We click on the signal button. There are different subgroups of parameters. Let's go through all of them. First is the data pattern group. There are different modes on how a C5 signal can be generated. First is the run mode. Here we have two options, interrupted and continuous. In an interrupted run mode, the AWG system is stopped and started before doing some changes on the signal. For example, if you change the voltage level of the signal, the system needs to be stopped and then restarted to apply the changes. In continuous run mode, there will be a continuous signal without the AWG system interruption. This is specially used during the hysteresis test, where a signal needs to be provided to the DOT continuously. Here, we find the triggered start checkbox. Trigger enables the signal to come out of initial loop block into the next block. LSB first. Select this to select the least significant bit to be transmitted first instead of most significant bit. AWG offset. This is the offset voltage value of the AWG out amplifiers when the AWG is in stop status. This is the AWG amplitude which is measured at the AWG output amplifier level. Next is the frame mode. It is used to generate complex signals of CSI and DSI protocol. We can select the sequence file using this button. The burst mode is used as a default mode. For burst mode, the below displayed HS data and LP data are used to create the CFI signal. 
Here we can see the preamble option. If we are going to use this option, we need to use special frame sequence files, which are defined according to the MEP C5 specification. By clicking on this drop down menu, we can select one of the formats available. At the data rates and the transition time group, the HS and the LP data rate and the transition times of HS and LP transmission can be provided. Next, we have the AUX channel group. It is the fourth channel of the AWG module. By using the drop down menu here, we can select which kind of signal can be generated on AUX channel. For the AUX channel signal, we can also provide the amplitude and offset values. To assign a value for the parameter, click at the text box field and we see the minimum, default and maximum values defined according to the MEP C5 specification. On the right side of the panel, we can find more subgroups. If you want to modify any parameter from these subgroups, you can go ahead and modify according to the range of values allowed. Once we have selected all the required values, we click on the Apply button to generate the C5 signal to test the DUT. After that, we see that the log file is updated here with the information of signal generation. And here below, we can see that the download of sequence with the progress is done. After applying all the values and we see the signal at the scope, we will save the file. It also can be loaded using the load button here in the next run without configuring the DUT again. And here, we can reset all the parameter values to default by pressing the reset button. Hope we were able to give you an idea about the MEP C5 N5991 frame generator functionality. Thank you for watching.